Hyvä päivä. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about who I am. I've been coming to Turku for the last seven years um, as a Fulbright scholar for a year and as a visiting professor at the University of Turku. Um, I have been an educator for 40 years, um, always with migrant students and in linguistically and culturally diverse settings. I was a bilingual Spanish-English class teacher and an English as a second language teacher, and then a professor and a school district person always working in this area. Um, and I'm currently working on a project from the Ministry of Education, Kerkihanke, um, about reforming teacher preparation in response to the changes in the national curriculum. So I'm just going to do a short presentation. My assumption is you know these things already. I'm not going to be saying anything new, but maybe just putting it together in a way with some examples that can help you. Um, I'm from New York, and so normally I talk very quickly. I'm trying to not talk quickly, but stop me, ask me if you don't understand, ask each other, and I will give you um, time to talk. So um, very specifically, I was asked to think about early childhood settings. And the context for all this work is that the world is getting smaller. So migration is a fact of life on every continent. There's instantaneous communication all over the world. So I could pick up my phone and talk to my husband in Colorado or call a friend in Germany or somebody in South America could be talking to somebody in Alaska, somebody here talking to somebody someplace else. We are completely connected all the time now. And also, the reason why this work is so important is the current global economy depends on people who can communicate in more than one language, who can communicate across cultural differences, and are able to work with and get along with and learn from people different from themselves. Diversity in Finland has always been here. Um, but what's happened is it some ways has grown more obvious. So there have always been Russian and Estonian and Western and Northern European immigrants into Finland. They've been white and they've been Christian. And so they're not so noticeable as Somalis coming in, um, people from Kurd Kurdish people coming in. All of the new migration is more obvious. People's skin is darker, their religions are different. You can see these things. But the, as that diversity grows, what we know is that the diversity in the classrooms is good for all students. It allows all students the opportunity from a young age to start to learn about difference and to get along and notice differences and not say different is bad. Different just is. Um, I think that what's important, as I, and this is a very short presentation, so I'm trying to get the most important things, is that every teacher, by what you do and what you don't do, by what you say and what you don't say, that sends a message about cultural diversity, linguistic diversity. If you say, only Finnish, then that says something if your language is other than Finnish. If there's never a picture in a book or on the walls of a child who looks like me, then where do I belong in this classroom? And so that's a part of the work so that teachers can help students or they can hurt them, but even not intentionally hurt them. Um, and also, one of the things, and I just did a class in Helsinki with all early childhood um, educators on Saturday. One of the things that we talked about is we can say to the students, it's really important to get along with other people. And then we go to the coffee room and we don't treat our peers in good ways. We aren't kind, we aren't tolerant, we say things, and the students see that. And so part of responding to diversity is really thinking about how do I act and how do I act with other adults. It's important, I think, that as you listen today and go forward in the work is that you think about how do I support identity, positive identity development in the classroom? And then how does the way I look at the world, how do my cultural frameworks affect the work that I do with students from different backgrounds, with families from different backgrounds. 
because my belief is that every single child, no matter what their background, no matter what their circumstances, if they're rich or poor, or if they're white, brown, black, whatever they are, if they speak English or don't, I mean English, they speak Finnish or don't, if their parents are gay or lesbian or transgender, every single child in my classroom deserves a teacher who cares about that child as an individual and also believes in that child's potential for success as an adult. Because what we're doing is not taking care of children. What we're doing is getting ready for the next generation that's going to take care of the society. And that starts from the moment you begin to work with them and their families. Um, I'm getting old and I'm not gonna be able to be doing this work forever, nor do I wanna do it forever. But, um, but I'm very conscious that as teachers, we have this special role that no other profession has in terms of getting the next generation ready. And you'll see that I have lots of pictures here that I've taken from the walls of classrooms and, and different schools. So I wanna talk just a little bit about this idea of culture and identity, because sometimes we talk about multicultural students, but really we're talking about who are we as human beings. And so I want you to just take a look at this picture if you can see it. And it, it represents the idea that as human beings, we all engage in what we call cultural practices. So as a human, we have to eat. And then different cultures define what are the ways most of us eat together. So in some cultures, people eat from each other's plates or they sit on the floor, whereas in other places we sit in a chair and we only have our own plate. Or somebody has their own plate, but they go off to sit in front of the TV. Um, do you know what holiday the bottom left picture might represent in the US? And it's sort of hard to tell, but there's a turkey. So that's Thanksgiving. If you were from the US, you would see that immediately. Oh, that's Thanksgiving dinner. So we, we have these cultural frames about the way we eat, the way we do things. And the way that children learn how to be in the world is from their heritage culture. The kids see the tools and the symbols and all the values around them to make them make sense of the world. And we learn from the people around us how to use those cultural tools. And so from birth, we're, we're figuring out how to be in the world. The, the thing that's most important as teachers is there's lots of ways to be in the world. There's lots of things that we learn. And what the kids who are coming from different backgrounds may learn at home isn't the same as what we did when we were young or what we expect kids to do in a Finnish setting. What are some of the sources that can be a conflict? What are the roles that different genders are supposed to have, that different age groups are supposed to have, class roles? Um, Nonverbal communication. Does anybody know if I do this, does this mean anything to anybody? So if I were in a northern Mexican town and I did this, it would mean, oh, that person's cheap. They don't want to spend any money. I don't know why it means that, but codo, which is elbow, is a term in, in Mexican Spanish that means cheap, doesn't want to spend money. If I do, does that mean anything? In Puerto Rican, it means who's that over there? <laughs> okay, so it doesn't mean anything unless everybody else around me. But if, some, if a child is, is going like this and they're asking you a question, when they wrinkle their nose, it means it's a question and you don't recognize and then you don't respond to them, then you start to do that. How far apart people stand? So are you comfortable if I'm standing here? You okay? What if I come here? Is that still okay? Yep. How about if I stand right here to talk to you? Okay. No, I'm doing this. You want to you do this? Somebody was telling me that they wished they could have filmed a, a Finnish man and an Indian man as they moved 10 meters. The Finnish guy kept moving backward and the Indian guy kept coming closer. There's nothing right or wrong. When you, when you come from a cultural practices that says you get space around you, and if I come close, I'm interfering with your space. But there's another way to look at that. If I stand this far away from you, I don't really care if I'm communicating with you. 
I'm not really paying attention. So I have to come close so that you know that we're, we have a relationship, we're talking. So if you get people who come together, then there can be conflict. What if you have children who are used to being held all the time and sitting on top of each other, and then other children who don't, you know, it's not typical for the kids to touch each other so much. That's a very common thing that happens. So those are some of the things that we're talking about. Um, I think if I could just say a couple things that for me are the most important is that we have to respect the dignity of every child. That even from an early age, we have to not accept any kind of name calling. And it's not just about culture and language. It's about what are girls doing? What are boys doing? We start to separate what genders do really, really young. And then when a girl wants to do what boys typically do, or a boy wants to do what girls typically do, it's really easy to try to push them um, into the role that we ex expect. And then I think that another thing is we're all learning all the time. You're here because you want to know more about these issues. And that's what, we, as teachers, is really important that there's a lot to know. So I just have a few more slides that I'm going to show you um, about what I call creating a home away from home when kids, um, when you have multicultural and multilingual learners. So one thing is valuing the students' cultures. On the left is in a school, and it's for the Mexican Day of the Dead. So in a school where there's a lot of Mexican students, it's traditional on November 2nd to have what they're called ofrendas or offerings. And you have the pictures of the dead people, and you have their favorite foods, and you have all kinds of stuff that's on the table. Now, it wouldn't make sense if you didn't have Mexican kids in Finland to be doing this in a Finnish, but there are celebrations that happen and it's okay to see them at school. The other is in a school where there were so many different um, cultures in the school, then they went from saying only English in this school, nobody can speak another language, to creating this map at the front door, where do kids come from? And they included Colorado and then said, we're a global community. We show where the kids are from. We have pictures of their family so that we welcome families from all backgrounds. And a very important thing is we have to say, what are our expectations? We had a, a long talk on Saturday about time, about what does it mean when I say something's happening at 8.30? If you tell the parents we're going to do something at 8.30, they can't bring their kids at 9.15. If you tell in different cultures, time means something different. And so it's, if I say I'm having a party here, people are at my door at 7 o'clock because I said 7, and I don't want anybody to come until 7.20 because I'm not ready at 7 ever for a party that I said. But in my Mexican friends, and I hate to call them out, if I say 7, they come at 9. So my Mexican girlfriend, really close girlfriend, when she has a party and it starts, she says it starts at, to me, it starts at 9. She tells everybody else it starts at 7. I get there at 9, and I'm still the first person. <laughs> so, but that's just the common cultural practice that's around. So that's important with families. And then making sure that kids from all backgrounds play with each other, talk to each other. Boys play with girls, kids that are different color skins, the child that's in the wheelchair, somebody doesn't have all of their arm. You know, we have all kinds of difference in diversity in our classrooms. And that the school is welcoming to all. In this one school that has maybe 80% of the kids are second language learners of English. It says at Columbine, we're all family. And the teachers put pictures of their own families and told stuff about themselves. And then the kids' families. Now, I'm not saying that would work in Finland necessarily because you're more private um, about your home life. But how do you make people know when they come in the door that they're, they are welcome? So the map near the door, um, pictures of the staff, all of these things, but most important is the word tervetuloa in every language that is spoken. Um, showing students from all backgrounds as learners, and these are pictures of kids from the schools um, that are there. And then the last um, little thing that I wanted, not little, this is really big, is supporting kids' home languages. To let kids know that they can see themselves in the school and that you 
send the message as the educators to the families that the families should be using their mother tongue at home. Their job is to develop concepts, not teach Finnish. Your job is to develop concepts and teach Finnish. And the stronger their concepts at home, the better they're going to do and finish at school. And when you have very young children, our, we are biologically ready to be multilingual. But it's not just an accident. It really means connecting language and concepts. And then celebrating multilingualism, talking to the kids about what a gift it is. You can't talk to a one and a half year old about being bilingual as a gift, but you can start talking to a three year old and a four year old that they speak a different language, that that, that gives them something that monolingual kids don't have. That's really important for the society. And then um, building social skills among the kids, and this is for older, telling the kids what's important. And so in this, it's hard to see what it says, but in our classroom, we can make everyone feel special. So this is from the kindergarten classroom and all the kids are there and then they did things to talk about how the other kid was special. And then this idea that we work together, that it's really important that they see that they can learn from somebody who's different from them. And a lot of times people will say, well, I don't want to, to bring up the difference. I don't want to mention that one kid's skin color is darker than the other because then they'll notice. The kids notice. It's normal to notice. What the kids don't do is say different is bad. It's adults that say different is bad. That's what they learn. So if we can just talk with children about difference as being, it's just human and we're still going to all get along with each other, then I think that is really important. And we do this work for them and for them, and they deserve our best. Kitos.